can't bridge this memory gap. Not sure if this belongs here as my communication with the client is relatively sparse, even though I'm still helping someone with a tech problem. Here goes. A few times, I offered a desktop computer repair service as a side gig. The computer I was tasked with working on, was one of those miniature desktops that's about the size of an optical disk drive, except a bit wider. A nice cheap machine for basic tasks. The issue was that it wouldn't turn on, and the owner suspected a power supply issue. On these, it's a laptop-style power brick on the outside, rather than an internal PSU that towers have. Easily replaceable. Now, normally I could build a dummy load and test the power supply. However, the client already cut open the brick, cut too deep and gouged several traces on the circuit board in the process. In his defense I probably would have tried the same thing on my own device, even if it were more of a post-mortem. Most external power supply bricks or wall warts are near impossible to open without destroying them, or should I say bricking them, pun intended, however, they still had the back cover of the brick, and the leads going to the barrel plug that powers the computer, were color-coded. Great. That means I knew the voltage needed, the polarity and the model of the brick. Thank you for saving those. I had a bench power supply that was adjustable. This wouldn't have helped much for a tower computer which required multiple different voltages, but it was fine for this, which just had the one pair of wires leading to the barrel plug. There was an extra yellow wire that I never figured out what it was for. I also knew the voltage by the label on the brick, oddly, it wasn't labeled on the computer itself if memory serves, I matched the voltage on my bench supply exactly to that marked on the brick, confirmed with a multimeter to be sure, and then held my breath and connected it. Progress. The fan began to spin and the power light came on. Good. The power light was amber, though, and flashing. Maybe not so good? Unless it was unhappy over not having a monitor? H oped one up and tried again. Nothing on the screen. It was obvious there was still a problem. I looked up the flash code and it translated to RAM error. Well, I swapped RAMs between the two slots, and it still got the same error. Darn. Try to spare RAM that fit. No dice. I looked up different types of RAM to make sure the one I had on hand was actually compatible. Looks like it should have worked. Oscilloscope time. On the RAM, I can make out a few vias that I can probe with the scope probe. They are facing straight up, mounted similar to the way that a laptop's RAM would be mounted. So this particular job is ironically easier than it would be in a tower computer. Well, I can't find anything that looks active while the computer should be running. I. E. The power light is on, flashing. All I can find are steady voltages. This isn't looking good. If you've studied computer science or taken such classes, you might remember something called the North Bridge on the motherboard. This is a chip that interfaces between CPU and RAM. What I've discovered with the scope looks like the RAM is not getting anything from the motherboard. So basically, it's looking like a bad motherboard, unless there's a chip that can be easily resoldered. I stripped everything that was socketed, and find that, what do you know, the CPU is in a socket. That was somewhat unexpected in a mini desktop given that they would have wanted to save space and money for a small system. With the motherboard out, I can't find a chip close enough to the RAM that it's obviously associated with it, I was hoping for an SMD package with pins on only two sides, so it's probably just a bad motherboard. I was hoping for a voltage regulator in an easily soldered package, there are some SMDs that aren't that hard to work with, but I digress, well, I found an online shop that primarily dealt with laptop parts, but also had a few desktop motherboards as well mostly from mini PCs or all-in-one computers. Well, they've got the right motherboard, but let me just look up the price of a new computer of this caliber, so I can be transparent with my client about that. A brand new mini computer of similar specs costs significantly more than just the motherboard, which was actually surprising given that it didn't have a separate GPU nor even a slot for such, so I went to my client with both prices. And also, the price of a new power brick, so he'll be able to plug the computer in properly when it is fixed. After a delay, he authorized me to go ahead, so I bought the new motherboard along with the power brick. The parts arrived and I rebuilt the PC. I pushed the button, and it flashes amber in the same pattern. Well FSCK. Okay, so it wasn't the motherboard, the only thing left that could cause a totally blank screen, never mind the supposed RAM error, had to be the CPU, the only other thing left was the hard drive and if it were bad, almost all PCs will show something on the screen in that case, unless it's shorted, but then it would smell when I tried to turn it on and my bench supply would have gone into protect mode, which also rules out a shorted CPU or RAM. Oh, and there's also a separate Wi-Fi card as well as the front panel I.O., but again, those wouldn't prevent it from booting. I sheepishly admitted to my client that I was wrong about the motherboard, and it must be the CPU instead. 
I found a reasonably priced, used CPU from a seller that had a good reputation. Couldn't get it new as it was an older CPU, I decided that I would try to return the motherboard to the store, and hope they will accept a good part, but didn't solve my problem return, and if they don't I'll just have to eat the cost. Thankfully, they did accept the return. The client approved the cost of the CPU, and in fact the CPU cost even less than the motherboard did. The new CPU arrived, and I redo the whole rigmarole of installing one. With confidence, I h oaked up the power brick and manufacturer's logo appeared on the monitor. Sure enough, it got all the way through booting and asked for a password. Luckily, I didn't need the password, the PC booted up when it didn't before. Just to be sure, I checked that I could move the cursor with the mouse and type in the password field with the keyboard. Indeed, that worked, and every USB port worked. Now, some might have booted from another hard drive or something to see if it worked okay, but given the nature of the original problem, that didn't seem necessary. Plus, the client didn't live so far as to make a return trip that impractical, and if he took it back to me I wouldn't have charged him again. With that, I contacted the client and let him know his computer was fixed. I delivered the computer to him and got paid for my time, the CPU and the power brick. In retrospect, had I looked up what a North Bridge was or the memory controller, I would have discovered that those functions in modern computers are part of the CPU itself, rather than separate chips on the motherboard. So I might have saved myself some time that way. But some lessons you end up learning the hard way. Thankfully, it wasn't the kind of thing that damaged previously good hardware or caused data loss. Story 2. What error are you getting? I just had this ticket come through. For some context, the IT ticketing system is separate from the one this ticket is about and this user knows how to take a screenshot. Also, I can tell where an email came from by the signature it has. Ticket short description, can't access communication work order system. Full description, can't get into communications work order system. I reach out via email, hi, user, are you working from office or at home at the moment? I believe, ticketing system, may need you to be logged into the VPN if you are working from home. Can you send me a screenshot of the error you are getting? User's response, emailed back from their cell phone, no I am in the office and now I can't log on to my computer. My reply, after a bit of a delay, I just got back to my desk. I don't see your account as being locked. Have you been able to log back into your computer? If not, what error are you getting? User, this time from the desktop email client, I am not able to log on to the communications work order site. Me, I'm confused. I believe communications department work orders run on, ticketing system. What error are you getting when you try to access it? Can you send me a screenshot of it? User, I just got in. I am not sure what is going on with my computer at times, however I was able to get in and do the work order. Me, okay, thanks for letting me know you're in now. If it happens again, please take a screenshot so we know exactly what the error is.